I love a good potato side dish, but I also understand how easy it is to get in the rut of making the same thing over and over again. Mashed potatoes, baked potatoes, boiled potatoes, whatever. I promise you there's a whole world out there of delicious potato side dishes, and I'm gonna show you three tasty ones. Sweet potato au gratin, smashed roasted potatoes, and an amazing chive and horseradish, mashed red potatoes. So good. We've got a lot to do though, so let's get right into it. Sound good? Let's cook. So the first one we're gonna make is a sweet potato au gratin, but we need a Mornay sauce. That's a cheesy bechamel. So we have to make that bechamel. And you've seen me do this a million times, but here's a really quick recap, and it starts with a yellow onion. I'm actually only going to need half of this. You could also use a white or sweet onion if you'd like. Slice off the end, slice it in half, remove that outside peel, and then we want to small dice it. We do not want large chunks of onion in our Mornay sauce. Heading over to the cooktop with a large rondeau pot, adding in four tablespoons of unsalted butter. Once it is melted, we are going to add in our onions and cook them over low to medium heat for about 10 or 15 minutes to get a nice brown on them. And this is actually great timing because while those onions are starting to brown up, we can prep up our potatoes. I've got some garnet sweet potatoes here. What we wanna do is just peel them and then thinly slice them. You're going to need about four large sweet potatoes. Once they're peeled, I'm going to thinly slice them on a mandolin just to keep them very consistent. If you've got great knife skills, feel free to have at it. These will be about a quarter inch thick. And you know what I say when using a mandolin, whenever you start getting nervous, stop using it. All right, this looks great. Next, we're just gonna take a quick break and go check out and see how our onions are doing. Onions are looking good. I just wanna cook them a little bit more, maybe just a couple more minutes, bring out some more caramelization, some more natural sugar. It's just gonna add that much more flavor to our sweet potato au gratin. Now, with that being said, there's one thing I do like to do with sweet potato au gratins. Now, maybe you're gonna be mad at me for this, but whatever. I like to cut in one thinly sliced russet potato in there. I just think it balances out the flavors so nicely. Totally optional and up to you. Let's just peel it and slice it up really quick. We'll just need one large russet potato here. After it's peeled, again, just like the sweet potatoes, going to thinly slice them about a quarter inch thick like those sweet potatoes, holding them in some cold water so they don't turn brown. Let's go back, see where our onions are at. Yes, this is perfect. I'm telling you, just taking the few extra minutes to get this sort of brown out of them will add that much more flavor. Next, six tablespoons of all-purpose flour. We wanna create a roux. So use that spoon and mix everything together until it is combined. You'll notice the butter and the flour will easily come together. Now I'm adding in four cups of whole milk. You could use skim milk or 2%, but whole milk's going to add the most flavor. Crank the heat up to high. This is what's going to activate our roux once it starts to boil. Going to get any leftover roux off my spoon and switching over to a whisk. Just want to make sure this roux is completely broken up and running through that whole milk. It will thicken very quickly once it starts to boil. You know you're good. Once you can coat the back of a spoon, run your finger through it. When the top part doesn't go through that little spot that you rubbed it through, you're good. This is also known as nappe. Let's turn the heat down to low. Add in four ounces or one cup packed of shredded Gruyere cheese two ounces or one cup of packed Parmesan cheese, two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Whisk all those ingredients together until they are combined. This sauce is perfection, my friends. Let's season it up well with salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Then just grab that spoon and mix all the ingredients together until it is combined and we'll just keep it over low heat. All right, Comies, and so important to season once, taste twice. Make sure you try this Mornay. Does it need any more salt or pepper? Because this is what's going to be used to flavor up all those potatoes, so it needs to be delicious. Also, if you want, you can maybe add in two teaspoons of fresh thyme or rosemary or a combination of both right now. I am going to finish with some fresh herbs at the very end as a garnish, so I'm not going to do it, but you have that option. All right, let's finish it up. I'm going to add in those sweet potatoes. I drained the rest of the potato, adding them in there as well. What we want to do is cook this over low heat for about, I don't know, 12 to 15 minutes. Let's start the process so that it spends less time in the oven and we have more control right here on the cooktop. One of the biggest reasons we're doing this is because high heat can absolutely cause this sauce to separate. So we want to cook it a good amount of the way through so it doesn't spend that much time in the oven. If it breaks, it's going to be very watery. It will still taste good, but it's not going to look that awesome. Okay, here's what we do next. Take the cooked potatoes off the cooktop, go into the countertop. All right, we wanna transfer these over to a casserole dish. A 13 by nine or an eight by 12 will totally work. 
just load it up. And be careful here because these potatoes are obviously really, really hot and make sure to scrape out all that Mornay sauce. Spread it thin evenly on the top so that it cooks evenly. Exactly what we're looking for here, but because all gratin means with the crust, you gotta have those breadcrumbs, right? Okay, so I've got a cup of breadcrumbs. I've got a homemade recipe on my website if you want it. What we're gonna do is just add in about a tablespoon or two of olive oil and mix this together. This is gonna help make sure the breadcrumbs brown up really, really nicely, and also don't burn and add a nice little crust to the top. And you'll notice they'll be a little wet. This is exactly what we want. They're saturated with that olive oil. Generously and evenly sprinkle this all over the top of our sliced potatoes in the cream sauce. Next, I just pat it down to make it flat. Going in the oven at 350 degrees, it's only gonna take about 30 to 35 minutes. Remember, we cooked for 15 minutes on the cooktop already. After 20 minutes, this is what it will look like, starting to brown up really nicely. Let's add it back in there, then boom. After 35 minutes total in the oven, we are finished. We're gonna let it sit for a couple minutes and I'll show you how to plate it up shortly. Now the next one up is one of my favorites, roasted smashed potatoes, incredibly easy to make. Now I've already rinsed them really well under cold water and I've got about 12 to 15 of these smaller Yukon gold potatoes. You're going to want them to be small to medium size, nothing bigger than that. We're not looking for a big old Yukon baked potato, will not work here. All right, all we wanna do is add these to a large pot of boiling salted water. Once it is boiling, I'm gonna add in enough salt so that it tastes like the ocean. Remember, it should be salty because it's going to season our potatoes. Now I've got this nice little basket that goes in the potatoes. I love this for this reason alone. I can transfer the potatoes right into the basket and add them into that boiling water. The problem is if you're boiling already and you're adding in one potato at a time, you're gonna shoot hot water all over the place and might burn yourself. Okay, slowly add those in there. What we're gonna do is let this cook for about 20 to 22, 23 minutes. Now, I always know when the potatoes are done, I come over, I pierce it with the fork, pull it up. If it easily slides off to the bottom, I know the inside is nice and soft and tender. Fantastic. All right, what I'm gonna do next is take them out of the water, set them on the countertop, and let them cool down for about five to seven minutes. And one of the reasons smashed potatoes are so good is because they've been boiled. They're so nice and light and fluffy in the inside. And then we sear them quickly on the outside. Now, there are some recipes out there that call for putting them on a sheet tray and roasting them in the oven for 20, 25 minutes. You don't need that long. We just wanna sear them. But first, okay, it's important that you wait it a couple minutes because they are going to be a little bit hot. I even wear a glove just in case. Then the next thing you are going to need here is going to be a pan, a measuring cup, Honestly, any of those two things will work. We just wanna give it a quick little smash. Okay, perfect, beautiful. This is all we are looking for. Then we're just gonna repeat the process with the other ones. And of course, lay them on the side in a sheet tray lined with parchment paper. We are going straight over to the cooktop. I've got my griddle fired up around 350 degrees, adding on a few tablespoons of olive oil, then Let's add on our smashed potatoes. If you have to do this in batches, no problem at all. This does not take that long to cook. Once they are loaded up, I'm going to add in about two tablespoons of unsalted butter. This is going to help brown up the potatoes even more. And of course, add some much needed fat to these. Next, after the butter, I'm going to immediately season it with salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Now I'm gonna let them cook for about three to four minutes. All right, a couple of really quick things while those smashed potatoes are searing. You can absolutely use red potatoes or even those small baby russet potatoes will absolutely work. And you know what? If you don't have a griddle, a cast iron skillet or a stainless steel frying pan will work fine. Do not overthink it. All right, let's flip these over. After that three to four minute time period, give them a quick flip. Perfect. That golden brown crust on there is going to be so delicious. Cook them for another three to four minutes. Once we are done, I'm just gonna take them off the griddle, set them to the side on a plate, and I'll show you how to plate them up in just a few minutes. And last but not least, I've got those delicious chive and horseradish mashed potatoes. I've already gave them a quick rinse and scrubbed them down of any unwanted stuff on there. All we're going to do is quarter these potatoes and dunk them in some boiling salted water. Here we go. I like to just quarter them into wedges. If you wanna cut them in oblong shapes or a large rough chop, so be it adding them right back to that basket that I used for the smashed potatoes, going in a large pot of boiling salted water. Again, this water should be salty. 
This is only gonna take eight to 10 minutes for these potatoes to finish cooking. In the meantime, I'm gonna heat up a few things in a small pot. One cup of buttermilk, one stick of unsalted butter, a third cup of whole fat sour cream. Now remember, these are horseradish mashed potatoes. So three tablespoons of prepared horseradish. All I'm looking to do here is take the chill off of all this. I don't wanna add all these cold ingredients to hot potatoes in the end. So we're just gonna cook it over low heat until it's nice and heated up. Just going to set that to the side. Let's go have a look at our potatoes. And just like with the Yukon potatoes, once I pierce it and it slides off, I know I'm good. These are gonna mash up perfectly. All right, grab the basket, give it a quick little shake, get any excess water off of there. We don't want that in our mashed potatoes to dilute the flavor. Grab our heated up fat, drain the boiling water because we're gonna need that. Bring it over to the countertop. All righty, and here's where I said it was gonna be different. If you notice at the beginning, I did not peel the potatoes. I left them skin on. There is so much flavor, so much nutrients in those skins. You can do this with any mashed potato recipe. I know there are some that wanna run it through the food mill and just can't have any chunks in there. We've got our trusty hand masher and we're gonna mash these super well. All right, here's what we do. We add in that hot cream horseradish fat mixture all in there. And we're just gonna start mashing and then we'll season it up. This part is totally up to you. I mash them till it's decently smooth with some nice little chunks in there. That's just how I like to do it. But once it's to the consistency that you want, we're going to add in a few things starting with two tablespoons of thinly sliced fresh chives. And then of course we wanna season this up well with salt and fresh cracked black pepper. You could also use ground white pepper if you'd like. Using a spoon or rubber spatula, just fold all the ingredients together until they are combined. Almost time to plate all these up. You have the opportunity for each of these potato dishes to season them to perfection before serving them up. So definitely take advantage of that. And we'll still always go back to these fundamental classic cooking techniques and putting them into practice. Leaving the skins on the mashed potatoes, making sure the cream is hot, getting that delicious cheese sauce just right and thick so it doesn't break in the oven. Even for those smashed potatoes, getting that beautiful brown sear. And taking the time to do this and putting them into practice will always elevate your everyday cooking. Okay, let's plate up each of these. For the au gratin, just like I said earlier, I like to finish with fresh herbs, some fresh thyme leaves or rosemary leaves. And just to see a quick look on the inside, beautiful, creamy deliciousness. The sauce did not break. Over to the smashed potatoes. You can serve them on a plate, platter, whatever. I thought a cast iron skillet would be fun here. So just stacking them nice and high, adding on a little additional melted unsalted butter for a little bit more fat and flavor and a little chopped fresh parsley. Last but not least, those mashed potatoes. The best way is to take a big heaping spoonful and sort of throw it right into the bowl. It's the best way to get them off the spatula. It works every time. Now, using a large spoon, start at the bottom and angle it and turn the bowl while working your way up the mashed potatoes. This is really important for butter, and here is why. Once you start to drizzle that unsalted melted butter at the top, it will go through all those cracks and crevices and like a... I don't know, it will create a butter slide that I definitely want to ride on one day. Finish it with a little chopped fresh chives. Simple to make, super delicious. I really, honestly, I think your family and friends and guests are going to love these options. But if you want to pair this up with something amazing, definitely check out my smoked prime rib recipe. It is so dang tasty. I've got a great recipe video. See you on there.